السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد All praises for Allah we praise Him, we seek His help in our actions, we seek His forgiveness for our sins, and we seek refuge in Allah from sinful inclinations within ourselves and the negative consequences of our sins. Whoever Allah guides to the truth, and no one can misguide Him. And whoever Allah leaves astray, the one who chooses misguidance for Himself, then no one can guide Him back to the truth. I bear witness, testify, and acknowledge that there is no true deity in existence except Allah alone. And nothing is worthy of any act of worship except Allah alone, the one without any partners or equals. And I bear witness, testify, and acknowledge that Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him, is his most perfect worshipper and final prophet and messenger sent to all humanity and jinn. O oh Allah, send your blessings upon Muhammad and the family of Muhammad and followers of Muhammad. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says in the Quran, dear brothers and sisters, يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون. The translation of this ayah is, O believers, be mindful of Allah as He deserves, and make sure that you do not die except in a state of submission to Him. And Allah also says in the Quran, يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا. 
The translation of this ayah is, O people, be mindful of your Lord, who created all of you from a single soul, and from it he created its mate, and from the two he spread many men and women. Be mindful of Allah, the one in whose name you demand your rights and make requests from one another. Beware of severing the ties of kinship. Surely Allah is always watching over you. And Allah says in the Quran, Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu attaqullaha wa qulu qawlan sadeeda yuslih lakum a'malakum wa yaghfir lakum dhunubakum wa man yuti'illaha wa rasoolahu faqad faza fawzan azeema O believers, be mindful of Allah. And when you speak, speak truthfully, justly, and with good purpose. If you do so, He will rectify and bless for, your, and bless for you your works for you, and forgive your sins for you. And whoever obeys Allah and His Messenger in this worldly life will truly achieve a great achievement in the hereafter. Inna asdaq al-hadithi kitab Allah wa ahsan al-hadi hadi Muhammadin sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa sharr al-umuri muhdathatuha wa kulla muhdathatin bid'a wa kulla bid'atin dalala wa kulla dalalatin finnar. The brothers and sisters, is the sunnah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it is a way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he prefers and selects certain times, places, and creatures from his creation. For example, from the angels, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given Jibreel alayhi salam and granted him a rank and superiority over the other angels. From all types of speech, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has selected and preferred his speech, meaning the Qur'an, over other types of speech. From all of the places in the earth, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has selected and preferred the masajid over other places, the mosques. And even from these masajid, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has selected and preferred and given a special rank, superiority and virtue to the three masajid, al-masjid al-haram, al-masjid al-nabawi and al-masjid al-aqsa. From the months, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has chosen the month of Ramadan as a superior and virtuous month over the other months. From the days of the week, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has chosen the day of Jumu'ah, the day of Friday, over the other days of the week. And finally, from the nights, from all of the nights in the year, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given virtue and superiority to Laylatul Qadr, the night of power, from all the other nights in the year. Part of you know, respecting and showing our commitment to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is to give due regard to these times, places, and creatures Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has chosen and preferred. And likewise, from this hierarchy of virtue, Allah has made for the believer certain seasons of the year that are more virtuous than other times of the year. And the purpose of these virtuous seasons is that so that we take opportunity we take advantage of this opportunity and we increase our worship and obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so that we can draw closer to Him. And from these virtuous seasons, dear brothers and sisters, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has chosen the sacred months. And in this khutbah, I will be speaking about the sacred months and specifically the month of Dhul Hijjah, which has started. Firstly, the sacred months. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in the Quran that there are 12 months in the year. He tells us in the Quran there are 12 months in the year. He says, In Iddat al Shuhudi Indallahi Thna Ashara, Shahran fi kitabi lahi yawma khalaqa samawati wal arda, minha arba'atun hurum. He says, Indeed, the number of months ordained by Allah is 12. In Allah's record since the day He created the heavens and the earth. And from these 12 months, four months are sacred. Four months are sacred. Does the ayah tell us which months are sacred? No, it does not. The ayah does not tell us which months are sacred. The ayah simply tells us there are 12 months, and out of these 12, four are sacred, meaning four have a special virtue and significance in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the narrations of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, they tell us what these sacred months are. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told us in authentic hadith that these four sacred months are number one, Muharram, the first month of the Islamic calendar. Number two, Rajab, the seventh month of the Islamic calendar. Number three, Dhul Qa'dah or Dhul Hijjah, uh, Dhul Qa'dah or Dhul Qa'dah, the eleventh month of the Islamic calendar. And finally, number four, Dhul Hijjah, the month that we are in right now, uh, the twelfth month of the Islamic calendar. What does it mean that these months are sacred? 
What does it mean when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says minha arba'atun hurum? These are sacred months. There are two opinions of the scholars. The first one is that fighting is prohibited in these months. And this was something that the people of Jahiliya, the people before the advent of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, they used to believe in also. And the second opinion is that any sin that is committed in these months, it is more grave in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's graver in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's more egregious. And any good deed that is done in these months, it is rewarded more. It is multiplied in quantity out of the bounty and grace of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this leads me to the point of the virtue of these sacred months. And I just mentioned one of the virtues and that is that good deeds should be done plentifully in these months because they are multiplied in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he rewards them many times more. The second virtue of these sacred months is that Hajj, the fifth pillar of Islam, it occurs in these sacred months and the month of Dhul-Hijjah which we are in right now. And finally, the last virtue of these sacred months is the greatest of all days they fall in these months. The greatest of all days in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala they fall in these months. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he mentioned an authentic narration إِنَّ أَعْظَمَ الْأَيَّامِ عِنْدَ اللَّهِ تَبَارَكَ وَتَعَالَى يَوْمُ النَّحْنِ ثُمَّ يَوْمُ الْقَرْ the greatest days in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are Yawmul Nahr, the 10th of Dhul Hijjah, and Yawmul Qar, the 11th of Dhul Hijjah. And this leads me to my next point, and that is the month of Dhul Hijjah. It is a sacred month. It is a month in which the fifth pillar of Islam, Hajj, is performed. And specifically, the first 14 days are especially virtuous. The whole month is virtuous, but especially the first 14 days, they are virtuous. And these are the days in which we remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He swears by these 10 days, the first 10 days of Dhul Hijjah in the Quran. He says, Wal Fajr, He swears by the dawn, Walayalin Ashr, and by the 10 nights. The scholars, they say, Walayalin Ashr, it refers to the first 10 days of Dhul Hijjah. What should we do in these 10 days? What are some recommended actions that we should perform? Number one, we should remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala abundantly. We should engage in a dhikr, in the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah says, وَذْكُرُ اللَّهَ فِي أَيَّامٍ مَعْلُومَاتٍ وَيَذْكُرُ اللَّهَ فِي أَيَّامٍ مَعْلُومَاتٍ Excuse me, وَيَذْكُرُ اسْمَ اللَّهِ فِي أَيَّامٍ, في أيام مَعْلُومَاتٍ Mention the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the known days. What are the known days referring to in this ayah? The first 10 days of Dhul Hijjah. These are the days which we should engage in abundant remembrance of Allah. It's easy to do. Dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is one of the easiest actions that we can do. We don't have to allocate time or set time aside to remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. While we are driving to work, going to school, coming back home, we can engage in the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And one of the adhkar or the remembrances that we should say during these 10 days is Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, La ilaha illallah, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Walillahi alhamd. Try to say this as much as you can. Any place that you are in, try to remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It carries great virtue and reward from Allah. The second is fasting in the first nine days of Dhul Hijjah. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he would keep voluntary fasts in the first nine days of Dhul Hijjah. And this leads me to my next point. The ninth day of Dhul Hijjah is Yawm Arafah. The day of Arafah, when the Hujjaj, when the pilgrims, they stand in the plains of Arafah and they invoke and beseech Allah for His mercy and generosity. That is the day that anyone who is not going to Hajj, he should keep a fast on that day. And the Prophet wasallam mentioned that fasting on this day, it carries great virtue. And finally, the last point I will conclude with is one of the emphasized sunnah of the Prophet wasallam. It is strongly recommended to do this. And in fact, many scholars, they can even consider it wajib, obligatory, if you are able to do so. And that is to sacrifice al-udhiyah, to sacrifice an animal for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. On the 10th, 11th, or 12th of 
Dhul Hijjah or 13th of Dhul Hijjah. Any of these days, it is strongly recommended to sacrifice an animal if you are able to do so. This is an act of worship that we do to please Allah, hoping for His reward. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the ability to worship Him with excellence and may He accept our good deeds. أقول ما سمعتم استغفر الله لي ولكم ولسائر المسلمين فاستغفروه إنه هو الغفور الرحيم. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على محمد سيد الأنبياء والمرسلين وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين ومن تبعهم بإحسان لا يوم الدين أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله اعلموا رحمة الله وإياكم إن الله أمركم بأمر بدأ فيه بنفسه وثنى بملائكته وثلث بكم أيها المؤمنون من جنه وإن فقال قولا كريما إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد اللهم بارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد اللهم تقبل منا إنك أنت السميع العليم وتب علينا إنك أنت التواب الرحيم ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار اللهم أعز الإسلام والمسلمين في جميع البلاد يا رب العالمين اللهم أعز الإسلام والمسلمين في جميع البلاد يا رب العالمين اللهم أعز الإسلام والمسلمين في جميع البلاد يا رب العالمين عباد الله إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعظكم لعلكم تذكرون اذكروا الله العظيم يذكركم واشكروه يزدكم واستغفروه يغفر لكم واتقوه يجعل لكم مخرجا وأقم الصلاة إن الصلاة تنهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر